This week on Barbell Shrug, we interviewed Dr. Romanoff, author of The Running Revolution. And uh, Chris is being punished. Barbell Shrugged is brought to you by you. To learn more about how you can support the show, go to barbellshrugged.com and sign up for the newsletter. Hear this and just about anything else. <laughs> Welcome to Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson, Chris Moore, CTP behind the camera. We are at Princeton University. We have taken over. Uh, we, we stole this we classroom. We broke into a classroom where Einstein once taught and we set up our gear. Hopefully no one finds us. We have, uh, this is perfect, perfect place to have Dr. Romanoff. Uh, running uh, genius, movement genius, really. I've heard uh, it's not just about running with you. It's, you, you like to talk about swimming and biking and, and pose apl- applies all that. So if you've ever had any questions in, about pose method or uh, just how to run properly or barefoot or whatever, we're going to do our best to address this tonight without getting uh, too off topic, which will definitely happen. No, that's going to happen. It's yeah. going to be plenty of distraction. <laughs> but we're gonna, it's going to take us an hour to get through uh, all the points. Uh, make sure to go to barbellshrug.com, sign up for the newsletter, and uh, we can notify you when we do things like break into Princeton University <laughs> and, and uh, abduct Dr. Romanoff. For <laughs> he has graciously, yeah. voluntarily oh, yeah, agreed yeah, 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 yeah. to do this. Yeah, he did. He, I think he mostly because he's amused with us and our shenanigans so <laughs> yeah, he, far. He, he watched us talk and laughed quite a bit. So she's back there. Not too. with us. At us, at us. mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these guys. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure to be here. It's a really incredible honor to be in this building, in this university, and with Speaking you guys. To us, thank you. <laughs> in, with you guys as well. <laughs> thank you That's to invite That's, me. It's our well. pleasure, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you're if you're just listening, you should go check out the video and kind of see the view that we have going on here. We are actually in a legit like uh, lecture hall. It looks like we're on the set of A Beautiful Mind. This yeah, is where it was filmed. Yeah, this room is yeah. where that was filmed. It, it's exactly it's what it I was is. told today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Russell Crowe has been in this room. <laughs> you have to be shitting me. <laughs> no, but I, I was telling the the good doctor and Doug a minute ago that I was walking up to the little garden there, the uh, Prospect Garden, which is lovely, just lovely. And I noticed one of the buildings on the lovely. side, uh, the windows. You know that movie? That, they've seen that movie. Where he's doing math on a window with a little white marker pen. I <laughs> saw those style windows. It was really cool. It reminded me of that, yes, lots of smart people we, have we done. like, I got to get a white marker pen. <laughs> I've got to pretend to be smart. <laughs> exactly. But I felt inspired, as I'm saying, Michael, and I'm, I'm especially inspired now. That, that, that feeling transitions to this moment right now. Well, let's see if that, that uh, actually crosses over into the podcast. I will tonight. tell such a good dick joke later. Give me time to think about it. <laughs> Wait, should we, should we introduce your son as well? One more time, what was your name? Severin. 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 Severin Romanov. He is uh, your, your guardian angel. Uh, he's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> he's your boss. Well, you, oh, you're, we were making a joke earlier that uh, you're, you're the slave. You prefer being a slave. Just tell me where to go. What's oh, it, it's just um, one edition, happy slave. <laughs> happy slave. You got the wife, she tells you what to do. Uh, obviously, yes. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what it, uh, you came here... At, if people don't know this, you actually, I don't know how this happened, but you made your ways into the CrossFit community uh, a while back. Was that through Brian McKenzie? Yeah, it's Brian McKenzie's efforts. So he introduced me to Greg Glassman, and Greg, Greg Glassman told me, if you will impress our coaches, we will be in a friendly relationship. He put about 100 coaches, best coaches of CrossFit in San Diego University. I did presentations there. And the coaches love it, uh, and um, the rest it's, is it, history. Uh, is history. Yes, <laughs> and our relationship was uh, started and was continuing. A very good relationship. How long ago was that? Oh, it's already about seven years, probably. Okay. And I actually don't know what you were doing before you kind of made this partnership with. I don't even know if partnership is the right word, but before you connected with CrossFit. 
What were you doing before that? I, I was spying in America. <laughs> spying in America? Spying. <laughs> oh, no. Is that true? You're not supposed to tell us that. Uh, <laughs> You're the worst spy ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretending that I am trying to teach people how to run. <laughs> so <laughs> I was involved by accident again. Everything in life is an accident. Like you're meeting your wife an accident. Your kids come by accident, you know. <laughs> Happy. Especially, especially the kids. Everyone's like, shit, man. You told me you intended for this to happen. Happy no, accidents, you and say. Yes, it's correct. But I was awaiting my son a very long time with my wife. And his name came... Um, way before my first kids came, you know, it's before my first and second daughter was born, yeah. because his name was awaiting him 15 years. Wow. It's a very lovely story. Well, let's hear it. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's, uh, <laughs> I guess I will share with you some, oh, right now? Yeah, <laughs> do it. Sure, yeah. sure. This is I'll the best stuff. Oh, I'm meeting my wife in the first um, uh, year in my university. She's in um, uh, foreign languages um, student. I am physical culture and sport uh, faculty student. I'm meeting here in the um, biggest square, Lenin Square in our oh, city. Lenin Square. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's and we are talking friendly and uh, about us, uh, what we would like to do. And uh, we somehow came one question. If you would have a son, how would you call him? I told Severin. <laughs> she told no way. <laughs> she didn't like the name. Huh? No, she told, I wanted the same name for my son. Oh, no. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Agreement was made. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> um, it. It came from different sources. I was... Um, I uh, admired one gentleman from the novel of um, a Russian uh, um, writer about scientist Severin Budris, you know, mm. and its name came to me as a very extensive and very lovely name, and my wife loved this name because she admire one guitar player from Chirwana Ruti <laughs> a <laughs> Polish <laughs> rock group. You know? his, ah. his name was, he shared that name, I guess. He was the coolest thing. You got the probably. science and the art. Yes. There you go. Uh, he got uh, all this together in, in business <laughs> connection. There you go. Did you, uh, so did you have him like learning biomechanics and running and, and yeah, pose he, postures when he was like five years old? And he started <laughs> traveling. Yes, it's no funny, but I started teaching him and he started traveling with me at age four, you know. Seven, get up and run for us. Let's check you out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I share a birthday with, uh, I believe it's Einstein and Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix? But the Holy most shit. most funny thing in this game, most, mo maybe not funny and him even mysterical that his birthday is uh, November 27 it's the birthday of San Severin oh wow That's a uh, we were found we were with my wife in Cologne uh, Germany uh, it was a European conference there and we are driving on a car and it, we s suddenly see the street it called San Severin we're like let's go yeah <laughs> we're but coming and there are church San Severin we're like wow <laughs> we come again cool, man when all these um Something you love, something this person you you met love loves as well. You, you stumble across these little indicators that sort of point you in all direct. You're going in the right direction in your life. It seems like these it, indicators it, are good signs for you. It's correct, right? And suddenly we saw this, and then I brought this brochure about San Severin. He is, was a Roman um, monk or the priest um, who came in Cologne and built the incredible society over there, and people mm. loved him, that's why he becomes saint, you know? You've got a lot to live up to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus, you man. Work, <laughs> you working on this? <laughs> you need to learn how to play guitar, run like a champion, and build amazing societies. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're building his business, right? You're CEO, aren't you? Right. Yeah. I saw so your business card. Oh. That's why he's Very my boss. business card, by the way. Yeah, he's your boss. I have, <laughs> so you get, how long have you guys been business, building this business, formalizing this into... So I wouldn't dare take Yeah, two years ago. If uh, if we're but, gonna interview uh, him as yeah, well, sorry. do we want to put him on a mic if mm. for like long? Yeah, for long. Yeah. Well, sorry. Well, we're getting a little sorry. We we'll go back. <laughs> Chime in. Yeah. But punchy coming too. Sorry. Uh, 
Doug, answering on uh, your question, uh, sure. s- sorry, I kind of um, uh, <laughs> detour. <laughs> <laughs> detour, we're used to it. We have, we have uh, lots right, of people to right. detour. <laughs> and uh, really what I it. did, uh, you know, when we came to America, I was an uh, unemployment, uh, unemployed guy, you know, and I didn't know what to do, actually. When, when was that? When did you come to Ni- America? 1993. It, uh, it was not the refugee things or anything. Uh, we came for wedding party for two weeks on Miami Beach. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's it. Uh, then we like it so much that we stay. Oh, <laughs> and nice. Actually, it's my two girls decided that we have to stay here, you know. And we apply for um, uh, papers, uh, and we answer it positively, uh, like permission we, uh, was given, and uh, it was given under the uh, name of, as a exceptional uh, abilities in higher educational. Level. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. there you go. Put that on the resume. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was uh, going through this thing in uh, in consulate in Mexico on the border uh, in El Paso, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm giving these papers for a consulate in uh, American consul in in Mexico. He looked at my paper and told, "Wow, we need people like you." Boom. <laughs> Easy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Easier back then. What, what were you doing uh, back home? Oh, I was... Mm, Sports scientist? Uh, yes, I was university professor, head of the department, uh, of sport department, uh, uh-huh. and head coach of my university team. And my background was track and field. I was the elite high jumper myself. Uh, so, oh. mm-hmm. yeah. so you're not just talking science. You can back it up with plenty of personal experience. Oh, uh, <laughs> well enough. <laughs> well enough. <laughs> yes. So, um, it was a l- long period of um, uh, struggling for knowledge, you know, and I was lucky that it's right in the beginning of my university career, I found that I know nothing. <laughs> this is, a, oh, I'm repeating just the same way. That happens to a lot of people. Yeah, it's yeah, important the, stuff. The, <laughs> one of the first who <laughs> find out this, it was... Um, Socrates, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's Socrates. famous. And I know that I know nothing. <laughs> you know, after that you have to be humble. <laughs> <There you laughs> so I start teaching in university after finishing the same faculty. I was finishing this with honor, and that's why I was invited there. But one year in army. Soviet Union Army. I was mm-hmm. in sport division, so I didn't have any <laughs> rifle or anything. Not the real army. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, I, I had uniform of soldier, you know. <laughs> they give you a gun, though. Uh, three times, bam, bam, bam. They were like, they were like after those three times, they were like, don't give him a gun. Yeah, again. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Gives him a sport uniform and go and jump. <laughs> Did you have any role? So, oh, sorry, Doug. Go ahead. I was going to say, so were you, you were the one that originally developed the pose method or just you put the name on it or no, like that's how, did, how did all that play out in the beginning before anyone else had a, heard of that term? A, a, a term didn't exist before me mm-hmm. and uh, I gave a pose a uh, completely illogical way, you know, because uh, pose not related with movement in the human mind. Usually it's a pose, pose, it's a fixed position, right. you know. So when I started looking for answer uh, for what m- movement is and how movement build up, I started using uh, footages uh, for an- analysis of ballet dancers and the real dancers and uh, karate martial arts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had friends over there, and so I have a, a big uh, accessible way to see all of the things. And my point was to find out how they teach so skillfully. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So I was going, 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 going around with this question. It's about two years, to, but two years for this kind of um, struggle, it's a very short time. Yeah. I, I was lucky. So in one day, it was October 1977, I was crossing square, main square of our city, coming back from a lesson. <laughs> And suddenly it crossed my mind. It's like, boom, like this. Uh, bulb up. Or, Light bulb goes off. And off, off strikes. Yeah, yes, yeah. and it's like... In reality, everything happens through the poses, actually. <laughs> they teach well, through the poses and movement happening through the poses. It's only a matter of which poses are main and which one is not. Mm-hmm. When this was clear... I came home, I told my wife, I found the concept, I found the method. She said, and how you call it? I call Posny. 
in in Russian, you know. She told such a word doesn't exist. <laughs> She's well, a ling- I just ling- made it up, honey. Li- ling- linguist, you know. She is a PhD in English philology. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. told I don't care. I, I name it. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, what this was is you you kind of came across maybe a language like a, a central mechanism for how motion must occur yes, regardless uh, if it was a ballerina or a karate yes, practitioner or an endurance any, athlete. Any, there was swimming, a lang- there's a language of motion you were getting It's at. correct. Um, animals are talking by um, pose language. When animals standing in the aggressive pose, you recognize that this, uh, this um, animal is not friendly. Right. You, you immediately, immediately. Yeah. and animals talk between each other not in language what we are speaking or talking. They're talking in language of poses. Absolutely. And each pose is immediately recognizable, you know, immediately. Otherwise, it will cost for your life. Yeah. So, in pose has every single component of what movement has, you know, psychological, intention, mm-hmm. mental goal oriented everything it's united in one uh, integrated in one single movement which called pose wow. so when box is standing in pose you know it's a boxer mm-hmm. with a um, um, hockey hockey you yeah. recognize Good call, Mike. yes uh, right yeah well done <laughs> <laughs> like like so uh, so it's everything become very clear. You know, I in the week I was teaching all track and field events pose method, <laughs> wow. and pose concept, pose model, and pose method. Method is a teaching. Mm-hmm. Model is a biomechanical structure. How this uh, movement is built up, and concept is a set of ideas. How this movement is mm. created how it could be operated, by which <laughs> laws, principles, and so on. So it sounds like a very elegant way of assessing motion where everything comes together in yes, an easy so explanation. That's it's how correct. you know it's probably a good explanation. Yes, and it's very easy to identify and analyze. Uh, I will give you just a confirming kind of uh, story. I'm in Hawaii, uh, Honolulu, teaching uh, running. But uh, um, a wife uh, of my friend, and both of them co- pose coaches, um, high level. And she is a teacher in um, um, Hawaiian... Um, the dancing? Like the no, canoe. Cano- oh, canoe. Uh, Paddleboard? Uh, no, it's a... Uh, uh, mm. it, it's a boat on the... It's a tribal local boat. Uh, yes, right. Two floating... Uh, Things with sticks right, it's tribal. several people in the boat, and they doing with um, rowing, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, she came to me and she told, "We couldn't uh, find out what best uh, way to do this rowing in the group. Could you help us uh, to do these things?" I told, "I don't mind. <laughs> Let's go and see it." <laughs> they took me on uh, the main canal in Honolulu. It's uh, right in the middle of the city, <laughs> mm-hmm. and the people ask me. Mm, uh, did you do this uh, ever yourself? I told I never seen it even. <laughs> and how you will do uh, teach us? I told let me see what you do, and after that I will tell you how I will teach you. <laughs> they didn't know what I'm into, mm-hmm. so they will made several back and forth uh, um, yeah, do a demonstration uh, for uh, demonstration on a boat. And I saw what they are doing wrong, you know. <laughs> it was a wrong body position. Right. And uh, you see, in pose concept, the main thing is how you are using body weight. Pose represent the main thing, uh, the best or favorable use of the body weight. Body weight represents gravity. <laughs> so in any event you're coming, you have to look at positions from point of view can you use body weight in this position or not? <laughs> if you cannot use body position, it's a wrong pose. Oh. This is what how it works. Because if it's a wrong pose, muscles do not work right. <laughs> yeah, this is your keystone of it's, the whole thing. Of, of course, because muscles are serving body weight, not anything else, not brain. <laughs> Please don't confuse. Because before brain was developed, brain called <laughs> neocortex, it's a new thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Before brain was developed, um, body weight and the muscles relationship already existed several million years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's a very long marriage and very successful. Well, I've heard that the only reason that a brain exists because you have to 
coordinate of course, motion so. and complicated work. You need a sponge doesn't need it, but an animal uh, needs a lot of hardware to operate. Uh, by. Uh, right. You see, this is what they call it's um, it, it's called um, um, a nervous system. It's a comfortable thing, you know, but. Um, a reality is that um, existed before bra uh, brain and nervous system existed a um, system of correlation between uh, body parts uh, over the nervous system. Mm -hmm. It's much faster, it's, uh, actually, you know. And um, it's old way of, it's through tissues, just goes signal, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we get uncomfortable in developing coordination through the nervous system, it's much slower, actually, you know. Uh, that old system kind of went uh, the, in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and we're using only in extreme situations these things. When something emergency between life and uh, death happening, we're using that. Uh, it's called continuum pathway. This is what called in uh, neurological uh, l linguistic, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So this we're using only in only very few times in life, maybe you know. Um, and, and nervous system gives you comfort mm -hmm. zone, you know, to regulate everything. This is what um, downside downside of nervous system. But good thing, you are comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, pose uh, created the uniform relationship between them, you know. Who is who, like in hierarchical relationship. When you impose, you have a body weight. So you can use muscles. <laughs> and when you, when you can use muscles, you can move better. Mm -hmm. So you survive. That's it. <laughs> Final point of equation. You survive when you have muscles involved. But muscles work when your body is <laughs> available. And when body weight available, it's the best pose. <laughs> yes, if you peel away all the layers of what a human is, you get yes, a, a foundation of what an animal needs to do to right. to go get prey, to it, attract mates, uh, to course. to uh, to escape the threat it, of another, you know, predator. It's all basically: can I move my body mass? It's, it's like what it all boils down weight, to right? weight, body weight, <laughs> body weight. Body mass. It's, oh, it's, it's, um, I'm a dummy. Don't you? Yeah. I, 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 I'm just yapping at my mouth. You forgot it's, about gravity. Mass yeah, is a, it's a different uh, definition in physics. <laughs> Sorry. So at, <laughs> at the most basic level, if you ask kind of the, the average person that's heard of pose running, but they're not really an expert in it, but they, they pose run because someone told them they should pose run because it's, it's better for them than regular running, just kind of your average CrossFitter, not particularly advanced in, in any kind of way, they're going to say, oh, don't heel strike, fall forward. Maybe they don't even say fall forward. Maybe they just say lean forward. Um, you made that distinction earlier. Falling and leaning isn't the same thing. But they're going to say basically the difference between pose running and regular running is you don't heel strike when you pose run. You land on the ball of your foot. And that's way oversimplified, I'm sure. So can you, can you in the most basic way for someone that wants to just run faster with less injuries explain pose running for someone that's basically never heard of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I will try to be as much things it. <laughs> uh, I'm concentrating right now because of what Doug is asking, it's really difficult. Yeah. Okay, I'll try it. I'll do it, you know. So we, we have to understand the, uh, what is essence of running from mechanical point of view, you know, first. Not from physiological or anatomical, from physical point of view. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we uh, we will get in a trap again, you know. So first one, how the material body is moving from point A to point B. This is the first answer so should be done. And uh, physics, mechanics gives a very simple answer. Only by external force. <laughs> muscles by definition, internal force. So it's immediately exclude muscles as uh, our propulsive mechanism. Do you understand? And the only external force acting on you it's is correct. gravity? I, yes, it's correct. Okay. Uh, there are other external forces, like ground reaction force exists as well, mm -hmm. friction, but they are not propulsive forces by definition. That's why they Equal are... Equal and opposite forces cancel each other out, is what you're saying? Not, not. They are not propulsive forces. They're not propulsive. Oh, it's, it's vertical. Uh, it's not, it's, it's not a, a Ground reaction is it's a reaction only, you know? It's a not force which produces the movement. You you're know? not going to move... 
in a any direction. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fight through. Mike. I don't know. I can't simplify this. But. Oh, this is what's happening. So we have to understand. So one only external force exists for us, which moves us. Uh, uh, it's a g- gravitational force, but uh, gravity. Uh, works only <laughs> downward, you know, mm-hmm. vertical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how we can transfer next thing is how we transfer gravity in the horizontal direction. And mm-hmm. this we're coming to the point that actually our movement is not linear movement uh, or um, translating movement. I, mm-hmm. It's actually a rotational movement. Mm-hmm. So we have to look at the running as a rotational movement because mm-hmm. only rotation is produced by gravitational force because gravity become gravitational torque we are our body is a rod lever mm-hmm. when you touching support you getting body weight and this body weight start rotate you around point of support beautiful and this is what movement happen so you put your foot down and then gravity is sort of coaxing you forward and you it's correct. rotate off your foot it's and you go forward um, support arresting your falling <laughs> And when you see, this is what happened. Look, this is what happened. So those in the audience, Dr. Romov has a, has, a, has a toothpick yes, uh, into his hand. Yes. He's going to let it fall, and it falls it, forward. It, it ho- goes this. But when it's touching support, it becomes body weight. Yeah, in your you hand, see, yeah, you see, let go of it, it falls forward. Yes, right. And then when you're finishing falling, you have to now reconcile and get back into Put falling. Put your foot back down again. You don't need to. It will happen. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, what happens is you lean f- Fall forward. Yes, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Mike. (laughs) I do appreciate it. (laughs) You fall forward. You catch yourself. Yes, sir. By letting your foot fall. Uh, Yes. Um, And then you... Fall again. And then you pull that foot from the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of like your rotation that you're talking about. It's it's correct, yes. In the bigger angle, you're rotating. Fast speed comes in. So there's three three main phases, Mm -hmm. right? What are those? Pose, fall, pull. Pose, fall, pull. So pose is when you're in stance on a single mm-hmm. leg. It'd be like a and figure falling, four, right? Falling is when you're you're falling forward. Your yes, your body's at an ro- angle. Ro- rotating, yes. Um, and then pull is when you pull your back leg yes, off the ground. When you're losing support, and it's happened when you're reaching one body weight to a ground reaction force. It's a very interesting, beautiful picture, <coughs> which I'm describing right now. I'm preparing an article for the uh, mm-hmm. one of the series magazines. <laughs> you know. So, so when when somebody is not in the proper pose, yeah. some things that are happening is the foot is landing in front, and that's when the heel strike, the the dreaded heel yeah. strike occurs. Yes. Sir. Uh, <laughs> another problem that happens would be the foot stays on the ground too long. Yes. They don't pull. Yes. Uh, the the foot off the ground uh and then they people also don't end up in that figure four position it's correct at the top and uh you were you were saying earlier during a talk that the uh talking about cadence mm-hmm. saying that cadence the the speed at which somebody moves horizontally is um is has less to do with cadence and more to do with the angle that they're falling. Mm-hmm. Cadence is another mechanism which allows to um, help uh, this falling happen. You see, it exists always a um, mathematical relationship. This level of, for example, here, it's a cadence, right? So y- you on this cadence and you can increase angle going, 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 going. But when you increase angle, your speed goes up. And you're reaching the level of uh, speed, velocity, when that cadence already doesn't fit that angle. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you have to change cadence. You have to increase the cadence with the angle. Yes, it's correct. It's like a steps like this, it goes. You see, so it exists this zone on this cadence, you can increase speed, right? Then you have to change cadence to increase the angle again. So what's basically being described like is that we, you know, we, the faster we travel, the the cadence increases but the lean or the fall the angle of the fall increases as well uh but the where people get it screwed up is not being in optimal position yes. during the fall it's correct okay one quick way if i can chime in well, well, no, I have, yeah jump on the mic man right, spin, uh, it, spin, it, around, spin around the other way sorry it's yeah. on one side yeah there talking to so it. one thing i can say uh that's an easy example nice of this uh really close okay so one thing i can say is um, a practical example of this is if you can run in place with world record cadence, 
you start to see that it's not about the cadence. If you can run in place and have just Usain Bolt cadence, but you're not actually moving forward, that's all you need to know that cadence doesn't directly contribute to uh, moving forward. And, and that the falling angle is what ultimately decides that. That's where you have the displacement of the general center of mass. And the other point that I wanted to touch on, uh, Doug, from a practical standpoint, there is no such thing as describing quote unquote regular running and then pose running. Mm -hmm. Because what Dr. R did is he found uh, that by analyzing thousands and thousands of runners, what he found was that he found the three elements that all runners do. So guess what, Doug? You have a pose position, you fall forward, and you pull your foot from the ground. That's not... Hey, Doug. It, we, we, all <laughs> we all do. We all do. So so what I'm getting at is it's not Dr. Romanov's opinion of what should happen. Mm -hmm. It's a description of what does happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not your option, Doug, to, to, to choose to do those things or mm -hmm. not. The reality is... It's, it's, it's less of an option. It's more of an optimization. So all runners do it. And, and so whether you heel strike, you will still be in the pose position. Your timing will just be off mm -hmm. and you will expose your joints to unnecessary load. Mm -hmm. So that's why it, it, for me personally, it gets frustrating when people are like, well, I don't do pose. Well, pose describes running, period. Mm -hmm. The three elements that you can't me. avoid. Mm -hmm. I figured okay. it was just a special way. Like you changed your running mechanics to do this thing because it's more... I, me being a dumb meathead, I didn't know that. Thank you very much. Well, well po pose is the is the different positions you are in, running or not. I mean, dancing, you're in different poses. Yeah, so the audience can pull this up. So, you, can, you can do a Google, Google image search and see the sequences of falling. And you can see this cadence. You just pull it up on your computer right now, and you can see the positions, right? That's so, correct. I mean, and as it was yeah. said earlier, I mean, pose. I mean, we're all in poses as we move and as we sit and everything. But as, as you were discussing earlier, that uh, you're just looking, f you have the pose concept or the pose method. And these are the ways that you teach people how proper poses. And so I think people do get confused when they say, hey, I run pose or something like this, uh, when maybe they should be just saying, hey, I learned how to, I know how to run well, but they're using the pose method to teach proper technique. So I think there's confusion because people start comparing pose to say, Chi running, or I don't, I don't even know what all the different running styles there are. I know there's like, a, like classic hill strike. I don't know if there's a, a, like a marketing name for that. Um, but uh, bad running. Bad running. Mm -hmm. uh, From yeah. the makers of bad running comes. <laughs> comes regular running. Regular running. That's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, and, and when, yeah, that was one of the things we've, we've had the discussion before is like, that's just the way you're supposed to run. You know, pose running is just the way, that's just the way, like you said, it's, it's not an invention. It's not a innovative thing. It's a it's a it's innovative in the way it's being described. It's the concept, the method, the, the, the way it's taught is what's innovative, not the actual movement. The drills to support the method. So it's called discovery yeah, the, in science. Yeah, the actually. Drills. And Newton didn't invent gravity. He discovered gravity. Right. So it's, this is what the difference. <laughs> yeah. Re regarding heel striking, like how did how did people start heel striking, or is that something that people have, al have always done, or is that actually because of modern footwear and, and yeah. padded heels and all that? Well, talk about heel striking. Find out all right. Let's, break. Uh, let's take a break real quick. <laughs> oh, oh tease. Find out. <laughs> I wrestled in uh, high school, um, picked up some jujitsu after that. But between those two, I started working out with a couple of meatheads, um, you know, doing bench press curls, things like that, uh, never doing legs. Um, you know, the standard gym guy workout. Never really got anywhere with it, you know, just enjoyed my time at the gym, you know, kind of socializing. I've done CrossFit since 2009. And I started playing with the barbell just a little bit, you know, doing some overhead squats and uh, front squats, thrusters, you know, basic Metcon. I really shied away from, from doing strength training because um, it was intimidating. You know, I'd, I'd never been a strong guy. At 130 pounds, I could always play that size card. I could always say, okay, yeah, I clean, you know, 220, but come on, I'm 130 pounds. But I've been crossfitting since 2009, so it was time uh, for me to, to, nut up and, and do something different. So, you know, as an athlete, I was like, what is the, 
the next step for me, you know. It's time to gain some weight and time to find some strength. I'd say the biggest thing that sparked me to do the muscle gain challenge was a simple workout that I did with a buddy. It was 12 9 6 of 185 pound power cleans and ring dips. Like, oh, that's a 90 second workout. <laughs> um, you know, he crushed it. And it took me 12 and a half minutes to be put down that, that hard by a workout. It was really like a blow to me. So, you know, that was the evolution for me. It was like, I have to get stronger. You know, I, I don't feel capable at all. A six month program, I'd say right now, even for a somewhat experienced lifter is still, that's a long time to commit. You know, you're used to nine, 12, 13 week, you know, strength cycles. Now we're going double that with 26 weeks. You know, when you realize that, how long that is and what, what a commitment it is, you know that, you know, you gotta do it. That's six months of your life that you're gonna set aside to get really fucking good compared to what you were. And that's what it takes. The volume absolutely blew me away. I had no idea what I was in for volume-wise because I this is coming from somebody who lifted, you know, Monday and Thursday. That was the days I lifted, that was it. You know, one lift, snatch on Monday, clean on Thursday, I might squat on Saturday. It was hard, but being stuck where I was, I was ready for a challenge and just something, something different. The conditioning and the muscle gain challenge is is perfect complement to the program. It's, it's short and intense workouts that are really there to help you kind of maintain your abilities. You know, your ability to do pull-ups and, and muscle-ups and things like that, all those needs are addressed. And so, you know, a lot of people think, again, with a muscle gain challenge, oh shit, I'm gonna gain 20, 30 pounds. Um, my pull-ups are gonna suck. I won't have handstand push-ups. And that's all bullshit. Um, because they, they make you do those things multiple times a week. Um, all the skills that you, you know, need or value will remain intact. Before the muscle gain challenge, my nutrition was, was pretty zone paleo because I was so into CrossFit. I think that uh, um, I was underfed, you know, for breakfast. I remember having three blocks of, of egg whites with uh, some almonds and some unsweetened applesauce. And it was like a three block breakfast. I guess I didn't think about eating for my goals, but food is the most important tool that you can use to get strong. I was wanting to be super healthy and have this zoned out, you know, paleo type diet, um, but I also wanted to be a lot stronger. By abandoning those principles and taking on the proper nutrition, uh, you know, I made a huge change. Just using the knowledge that they give you um, through the Faction Foods Nutrition course and all just the, the tips on, on nutrient timing, when to eat, you know, when to eat what, those things become a habit. And they actually introduce you to habits in the muscle gain challenge. Here's habit one, you know, weigh yourself daily. Habit two, um, eat this after you work out. And, and those habits, I still use them, you know. After the first four weeks, I could tell that I was on the right track. Uh, my first time maxing my back squat during the challenge, I made like a 15 pound PR and it was the first time I'd ever um, squatted, I think 275 pounds high bar. And I was, I was like, okay, this shit works. When I started the, the challenge, I was, I was 130 pounds, had a 2X body weight back squat like on the dot. I think I was 260, 265 on my squat. Um, at the end of the challenge, I was over 150 pounds. I had a 300 pound front squat and a 365 pound back squat. So my squat went up uh, 100 pounds during this uh, muscle gain challenge. Competing in weightlifting was part of, I think, just like a natural progression. If you do this, you know, runners run 5Ks, 10Ks, you know, um, CrossFitters compete in CrossFit competitions and you get into weightlifting and I think it's just a natural progression to want to do um, a competition. My goal is to try to maximize my strength at the current body weight that I'm at now and compete in December at the American Open. And then after that, if, uh, if I feel like I'm kind of maxed out on my, my body weight, maybe bump it up a weight class and kind of relive the whole uh, muscle gain challenge thing, see how far I can take this. Strength helps build confidence and, and a confident person walks, you know, differently than someone who's unsure of themselves. And, um, and, and being strong and just 
having that whole thing about you, I think, is, is attractive to people. Chicks definitely dig that. Being stronger has absolutely changed me fundamentally and, and, and just the way I think and feel about things. Definitely more patient. I'm nicer. I'm happier, more confident. And uh, I can help move your couch a lot more efficiently now. Nice. <laughs> okay. And we're back. <laughs> It's a long uh, well, break. Is this, what was uh, the question again? Uh, I just want I just want uh, Dr. Romoff to talk about heel striking and just kind of the history of that. And really, is it, is it as bad as everyone why, says it is? And is it, gonna, is it going to injure you? Why does it happen? Just talk about it. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> it's a good question. You know, mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the science, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, it started really in in nineteenth century, and the, Probably the most profound scientist in this case was uh, Etienne Julius Marais, a French engineer and a cinematographer. It's his book, La Mouvement, in 19, uh, um, 1895. No, was, 1895. Yes, it's La Mouvement. It was a classical thing. But he so did. Classic as you get it. I want that. Yes. Look <laughs> yeah, at that uh, book somewhere? Uh, yes, uh, it uh, was uh, repeated in 1972 by New York Publishing House. Oh, somewhere. Cool. But uh, it's out of print a long time ago. <laughs> oh, really? And, uh, yeah. But you get copy. It's probably very difficult. But maybe you get copies. Well, La so La should we the steal movement. your copy? <laughs> 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 so um, it goes missing. You know why? Uh, uh, yeah. He described. You know, this is the whole science. It's a first uh, Ampere call it descriptive science. You know, mm -hmm. uh, French uh, <laughs> scientist uh, from 17th century. <laughs> uh, he called it um, um, descriptive science. So he described uh, how running happened, but didn't explain why it's happened, you know. Mm -hmm. And he didn't care about heel striking. And uh, in the early stages in, in the, f the last century, running described, if you run slow, you're running through the hill. Mm -hmm. If you're running faster, you're getting on the forefoot. Is, is heel striking like a new occurrence due to new footwear? Uh, but uh, in foot fair, it kind of, again, cycle will return back, you know. Uh, and people start to think about uh, running as a um, panacea for life, uh, um, uh, solving problems, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Health, happiness, and so on. You know, this is what uh, uh, jogging came up, you know. And uh, nobody know, knew how to run properly. It was a know? huge explosion in the popularity of, it, was a, it turned into a fad. This, yes, of course. Jogging, what was that? Uh, oh, 70s? No, 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 no. It's, it's 60s, you know. The, it, 60s. it started in, in New Zealand. Um, the who Damn uh, Kiwis. Uh, not, uh, <laughs> not, it's Arthur <laughs> Lidier. Nice uh, Arthur Lidier started in in Auckland, uh, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael waits um, the Kiwi hate mail. Everybody's <laughs> <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> Bill Bill Bowman uh, uh, saw that something unusual happening there. He in 1962 went over there, got acquainted with. Uh, Arthur Ledger, the run with them, uh, almost was killed <laughs> because what they run over there, it was a club of big monkeys, uh, people who run a lot, um, and they run about 100 miles. Uh, it was philosophy of uh, Arthur Ledger. Uh, he's told to be fit, you have to run 100 miles. <laughs> That's pretty fit. Wow. Uh, uh, yes, it, um, and um, the, the, the Bill Bauman come back uh, with this virus uh, from New Zealand in, in America, and it's boom. <laughs> mm. oh, Bill, uh, was he the guy from Nike? Yeah. Bill? Yes, yeah, the yeah. Founder he, of he's Nike. the founder of yes, Nike yes. with uh, Phil Knight together. They yes. worked together in Oregon, mm -hmm. um, and um, Eugene, Oregon. And uh, what happened next is he, he wrote the book, uh, Jogging. You know, and because he didn't know how to approach uh, with technique, uh, he just wrote, "It's not important how you run; it's important that you run at all." <laughs> it, mm -hmm. his, mm. It's a declaration, you know. Yeah. Was, uh, and because he had the incredible uh, authority, you know, he basically dropped America into trouble. <laughs> And then he came with this veg uh, uh, shoes. Um, We've got the, we got created this. We created the problem. Yeah, now we're going to create the solution. Yes, <laughs> sounds like government. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, Michael, don't take this into a political direction. <laughs> and he pulled out this Nike, and uh, he was an incredible entrepreneur. And running boom happened in 
and the shoe industries it overnight become uh, yeah, 100 billion dollars later you get Nike yes, shoes for uh, it's correct <laughs> right so what's funny about all that we were talking about before the show how the, the heel is such an interesting thing because in mammals and, or animals you know, no, anybody he, who's running really fast there's, there's no heel uh, uh, animals do not have cheetahs where's I, the heel I, on a I, cheetah or a horse I, I wrote this in the book in my book you know their knees little. are backwards too <laughs> what the hell yeah <laughs> I gotta get some of those so <laughs> their backwards knee is their heel uh, heels are done what right. that's their ankle <laughs> it's their ankle is yeah, it? yeah and their backwards knee never touches the ground. <laughs> That's That's right. Right. Dr. Romanoff, we have a biology major here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, you said the, the heel is a is a is a human specific structure for standing upright, it, as yes, are uh, it's big correct. glutes to help hold a body upright. And uh, these are all things that all right, it's that upright They're position. there for a reason. But like the heel, obviously, if it, you needed a heel to run, cheetahs would have heels, and they look really weird if they had heels. But they would if you needed it to uh, run. Of course, so the evolution would not miss this point, you know, in this yeah. case here. And the fastest animals do not have heels. You have to admit this, or you are um, denying something very obvious, you know, and telling there is no spots on the uh, on the sun like uh, <laughs> uh, past you, you remember the story history with galileo galilei about these things you know when told uh, there are oh yeah galileo s- points out that yes well, maybe uh, everything is not what we assume it and, and uh, uh, th- 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 these guys from vatican told no i don't see it you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they basically deny these things so hills striking it was a kind of easy solution to um not talk about technique you know it mm. was uh, because everyone could run through the hills, you know, and uh, shoes were developed exactly to fit these un- unskillful runners, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, was, it was a mass so marketing thing. Uh, it's correct, right. And people believe in it. They want to run and they run and they don't need to think how to run. They pay price for this, obviously. By end of 70s, Runners World magazine in 1977 produced first survey about injuries. Uh, results were outstanding. Two from uh, three runners were injured every year. Mm-hmm. You mentioned um, that people didn't think it was a big deal because, well, the, oh, the heel deal. has plenty of cushioning, right? It's got this little oh, fat pad on the heel. It shouldn't be a problem. So why is the injury? Why are the injuries happening with the heel strike? What, I mean, I mean, because. It, it's, it's, Mike, it's very simple. It's a physical reality. Again, you're creating break. You know, <laughs> you're on the hill. You're breaking mm-hmm. your movement, mm-hmm. and faster you run, more break you're creating. So yeah. you're putting your heel down in front of your body, of and that's so. that's causing a breaking force. Of course, it's right? it's like a kickstand right out in front of you. It's correct. It's mm. not increasing um, absolute magnitude of uh, interaction with the ground because it's related only with the speed. Mm-hmm. But when you uh, heel striking, is this impact just distributing over your body? You know, and hit uh, some places which are weaker. You know, so it's not being absorbed by the foot uh, and the knee. It's y- it's y- yes. hitting the heel. The knee is more than likely not bent in that position and just driving the force right in your head yes, and back. Yes, it's correct. Yeah. Right. And so you're restarting the effort each time you put your foot. But you gotta of course, you have to come Reclaim your momentum each time. You of course, you're foot. losing. Do you understand? Break is break. It's like an um, un, 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 unskillful driver. He's pushing yeah. simultaneously on the gas pedal and the brake pedal together. Inefficient. <laughs> uh, the hardest way to run. The, the breaking and the, the it, joint impact is going to cause, uh, you know. It's correct. Like that's, that's why osteo, injuries. Osteo issues. The yeah. rate of injuries in running is outstanding, bigger than any other dangerous sports. Do you, you understand, guys? How yeah. do we, so, I mean, it, it's you're going to move faster, more efficient, less energy, and you're less likely to be injured if you're, if you're running in optimal pose. It's correct. You know, if you're using the pose method to learn to run, I mean, how do you get started doing uh, learning how the the proper pose method you you have to it's uh, like everything else you're learning you know first of all you have to learn main principle of nature you know nature to be commanded must be obeyed it's mo- not my words it's francis bacon <laughs> oh, uh, francis bacon was a pretty smart guy uh, yes <laughs> Put it and, kindly. and the very vicious guy <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was famous for this <laughs> Uh, he was in very big um, uh, position in the uh, uh, king's um, court, and he used this power. He liked the power. Yes, uh, like uh, Newton as well. Yeah, so I guess <laughs> we have here, if you want, it's like if you want to lift a, a heavy barbell over your head, there's a right way to snatch a barbell. You can try alternatives, uh, of but course, um, you will not the optimal be. way. Uh, people think this way, you see. This yeah. is what mistake. Uh, they think if I'm pulling up in snatch uh, some um, white uh, uh, pipe 
uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, absolutely different when I am pulling 200 pounds, you know, it's not, it's the same thing. It's confusion only. That's why uh, the same thing happening in running. People think, oh, I run anyway in two meters per second, you know, like slow run jogging. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the degree of your performance doesn't matter. The, 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 this the is beginner a runner mm-hmm. and then Hussein Bolt and, and all the marathons, they all obey the principles. It's just a matter of, of how course, good uh, they are. Uh, uh, the yes. Uh, just the matter of how much you are obeying, you know, <laughs> this is a point. Mm-hmm. Um, thinking that you can because while you're running slow and you can deviate a lot and you accumulating injury potential slowly so over time you have illusions that you are not injured you know that happens but with barbells too oh yeah. that, but <laughs> for sure <laughs> that I know doctor <laughs> but I can tell you that I yeah, got the data for that and, and, then, <laughs> and then one day you suddenly wake up and like oh it's pain there. That happened it's on like my thirtieth birthday. <laughs> 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 I turned Everywhere. thirty, and I was like, "I've been doing everything wrong." Oh, <laughs> everywhere. Uh, it's, um, I will give you a Russian joke about this. You know, oh, mm-hmm. perfect. Mm-hmm. We love Russian jokes. Oh, great! Uh, it's <laughs> one. It's innocent. You know, if you are over forty and you wake up in the morning and nothing hurt, you are dead. <laughs> 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 It's about perception. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of perception, like, you know, I uh, first, I guess, maybe heard you speak a little bit. It's been maybe two or three years now since that video you did with Louis Simmons popped up on the internet. So with it's Greg a, it Glass was in a between, four years ago. Four years. It's called. You, you guys can go on YouTube right now. It's it's seven part little series of videos mm. called A Violent Agreement. Uh-huh. So what's fascinating about that is here here you great are. Great name. Yeah, here you are uh, <laughs> describing Pose and all these things. And then on the other side of the of the room, uh, next to, to Greg is Louis Simmons. <laughs> you know, we talk, I, I I referenced him in the talk I did, and we got to talk a little bit about him after we left the room. How this is a very curious thing. Well, one, you're very different, but now Louis is is accepting and sort of sharing. Oh, Maybe um, he, he's so open minded. He's probably adopting some of your stuff into power. That would not surprise me. I think he is doing this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but to see such you know opposed uh, backgrounds meet so perfectly in the middle and agree almost everything. <laughs> the big thing was mentality. It was the first point, right? Yes. You talked about the four-minute mile. Then Louis talks about what it takes to be strong. And going back to that brain discussion, to be a great runner like anything else, you have to break through the, the barriers that are holding you back. Your own. But uh, Louis Simmons is a scientist, you know. He's a real scientist and the open mind scientist. Real. You see, when I'm telling the real, real, uh, real scientist, it means uh, that he he has an open mind, you know. He has no barriers of this thing, so he's very quiet about somebody's uh, different opinion. You know, he is accepting this uh, if he logically uh, accepts this. And he told your logic is good. <laughs> he told me, yeah. and, so and I have nothing to against this. You know, so we become friends. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of scientists, have have like serious researchers. T- taken the pose method versus other types of running methods and and compared them over time you know one group of people with 100 people versus another group of people with 100 people and they train for eight weeks or a year and they compare injury rates at the end of the year or they compare one style of running to another style of running or to the pose method of running and they run a certain distance and they measure caloric expenditure or or average heart rate at the same speed has there been studies done on the pose method versus other styles of running with with trained, experienced athletes? Yes, it's done. In 2004, it was published um, in the um, American College of Sports Medicine no, uh, uh, article. Mm-hmm. Uh, it uh, was a collaboration with the Cape Town University with Tim Noakes uh, team. Mm-hmm. And I was a um, participant of this. Obviously, it was pose method there, <laughs> that's why. Um, we found the, it was three groups uh, for foot runners. Uh, he'll, Toe runners and post runners. Mm-hmm. Uh, and post runners, I prepared myself. Uh, mm-hmm. a- and uh, all of them were barefoot uh, to exclude any foot. Oh, yeah. Uh, Take out the barriers. Uh, oh. mm-hmm. Shoes uh, right. <laughs> um, the interference. So no, no rocket shoes. It, it's correct, <laughs> yes. Uh, and the results were outstanding. You know, the mm-hmm. First of all, um, impact, f- like um, knee loading uh, rate uh, on the um, uh, in pose method the group was 50% less 
Mm-hmm. It, wow. Which it, is a huge number. Oh, yes. You don't usually <laughs> find those kinds of differences in scientific right. studies. It's yeah. correct. Uh, Profoundly yeah. different. Yes, and Tim Knox, uh, one of the most open scientists in the world, and he's a physiologist, and he always told me, Nicholas, you will explain me how to run, uh, I will explain how it works in physiology, <laughs> something like that. I tried to teach him at that time running uh, pose. He told, no, 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 I'm old dog and you will not uh, teach old dog tricks, you know. <laughs> and the uh, last uh, uh, the time I visited in May, it was a um, uh, World Triathlon Series. I was Russian with Russian team in Cape Town and I visited him there and he told, Nicholas, I'm running now post method. <laughs> <laughs> so he resisted and he accepted once he realized. Uh, yeah, because he become ill, you know, he got um, sick, you know, and uh, he had no choice to really continue, you know, to continue. Yeah. He, he told I'm running now on the far foot like you advised me. <laughs> so you want, you want to talk in the... Um, uh, it's a, was thank, a, thank you for yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's a, <laughs> I was going to bring that up. Thank you. Uh, it, it was uh, in this same study. It was uh, shown that um, um, while uh, on the knee was reduced, in increase on uh, on the foot, you know, mm-hmm. on ankle, you know. Ankle. Mm-hmm. But it's a logical distribution, you know. Actually, ankle and. Um, Achilles tendon uh, exactly the mechanism which is responsible for taking this load. Mm -hmm. It's there for a reason. That's the Uh, whole point of an Achilles uh, tendon. Of course. uh, It's like other. Yeah, it's better to distribute the load over multiple large joints rather than just one focal joint. And then if you're distributing across the calf and and the Achilles tendon as well, those are the calf especially is very vascular. It's going to get sore and it's going to recover very quickly as opposed to. You know, only your your passive soft tissue structures like your cartilage and your ligaments and and your tendons to some expen- extent, if they take all the force and all the load, they're going to get damaged, 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 and eventually break because they can't reco- recover. Excuse me, as quickly as something like your calf muscles. Uh, absolutely, this is what reason. Is. That's but uh, what the, our experience is that uh, our runners, whom we teach and control, uh, that they run really pose, <laughs> they don't have knee problems, uh, mm-hmm. and the calf problems uh, happen, but very seldom. You know, mm-hmm. it's happening. What I really love about the talk about comparing, we're just kind of bouncing back and forth between what, how animals are. I won't say designed, but how animals are uh, equipped to do certain things, like certain. Like gorillas and chimpanzees and other primates, correct me if I'm wrong, don't have Achilles tendons. Is that correct? No Achilles structures because what they, they don't run around. Yes. They charge a little bit. They have some shuffling, but they are made for for some posturing and some climbing. It's correct. But right. we share the characteristics with horses and, and kangaroos, and kangaroos, and these fast uh, right. cats, and that we have the ability to to run. Mm-hmm. I guess you have. That shows me right there. You need to put as much force in your Achilles tendon in a healthy way as you can. That's what's going to keep you springing forward. Uh, the kangaroos is the best example, you know. <laughs> uh, I would love to bring this uh, topic. Um, kangaroo was uh, researched by a group of um, um, McNeil Alexander. It's um, uh, a professor from Leeds University of UK, uh, one of the best guys in this field. They found a very interesting thing that... Um, Achilles tendons were in, uh, loaded over there, but with a faster speed, actually loading didn't increase. Hmm. What mm. increased, they're leaning forward. They call it like mm. that. Oh. And they never... Uh, they messed it up. They should have been calling it falling. They're smart, but not so smart. <laughs> I was reading this article. I'm like, the answer is right there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, all right, so if I want to get started pose running, like uh-huh. if... Uh, which I, I have done that before. I did a CrossFit Endurance seminar for a weekend, and mm-hmm. my calves were pretty sore, which means I wasn't doing it right in the first place. That's correct. Uh, mm-hmm. But if I want to get started, if somebody want to go, okay, what do I do? All right, you've convinced me. I want to I want to ro- you know uh, run pose optimally. What's their first step? Uh, in a practical way, I would, if you live in Miami, for example, I would ask you run on the sand, you know. Mm. You see, oh, on the sand, um, you you can't be on the hills. <laughs> like the loose, soft sand, or like the l- sand that's right close to the l- water that's l- firm. L- loose, loose. Oh, sand. so you mm-hmm. can't. You're, you're saying that if you heel strike in the sand, you're not going to have any locomotion. No. <laughs> Interesting. You, I, that is I, fascinating. I never even thought about that before. <laughs> mm. And you cannot overstride over there. You understand? Uh, you, you cannot do push off. <laughs> I used to run in the sand a lot, and now that I think about it, yeah, it was. 
all we always I, I felt like I always had to shorten my stride. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. This is all. You just blew Mike's mind, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like, Holy I'm like, shit, an doctor. Instant fix. I was do- I mean, ran on the beach for, for months and months and months, like every day for a while. Yes. And, oh, man. And that's interesting. So you man. can't push off. You have to lean and use it's use good. gravity it's while good. falling. Mm-hmm. And if you try to push off, it's too loose. It'll dissipate your force and it'll be it'll screw you up. It's correct. I have a, yeah. I have a good one because Nate brought – Nate Helming was on a show. He's been here speaking. He, he said he, – generally, I guess he would agree with you, and he's, he's not going to – argue but i guess he said on our show like one question you had was like what do you do when, when the, there's some variance like for instance you run pose but what if you need to go like up a hill uh, it doesn't change gravity doesn't care when you run downhill <laughs> uphill <laughs> or you know on the um uh, interfering course uh, like trail you know gravity still works the same way you know and then what <laughs> I'm yes. just kidding. <laughs> is that, is that, so if you're running up a, a small hill, your center of mass is still well above ground level. Of course. Right? And so you can still lean forward and have your center of mass Even with the very a uh, uh, high level of inclination, so you're it's still like, falling. It's not like a push-off, but maybe you have to raise yourself up more, it's, then you fall. Cr- like you have to like, extend the legs and raise up, and then you fall. Instead you of just st- leaning you forward. You're still falling the same way, but uh, um, there are, will be work done to uh, um, vertical uh, uh, development. Uh, of uh, your body. Is that a f- the, the Princeton? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a fire alarm. It's a very polite fire alarm. I think it's someone's phone. Oh, okay. Oh, then it'll show. Oh. Uh, it's not mine. I heard you don't use phones. No, no, no. no. That's right. <laughs> Is there something in, in, in the Russian culture that frowns against uh, phone use? <laughs> no. Did you say in a very classic I, way? Oh, he's classic <laughs> Russian. No phones. Was it? Uh, was it Brian McKenzie? I was trying to get a hold. Oh, of Brian him. said it. No, I was. Uh, I was on Thursday. I was like, I knew that Dr. Romanoff was going to be here. I was like, I don't want to miss him. So, Brian, I know you know him. So, can you like shoot him a text or give him a phone call? He goes, Ha. <laughs> like, like, uh, bro, he's old school exactly Russian. Bro. <laughs> Whoa, that's definitely what Brian. When I hear said. old school Russian. I picture you like doing math on a board, drinking vodka, <laughs> like nailing out these problems. But well, you live in Miami now, so yes, you I drink do. Vodka or, my, or, or no, tequila? Not uh, neither one. You know? oh, <laughs> I'm um, I'm disappointed. D- different creature in this case. I I do love red wine, nice red wine. My mm, favorite is Pinot Noir. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah me <laughs> yes. All right, if you're up in Northern California in the next month, I'll be there. Fantastic vineyards. Uh, we can go. All right. <laughs> then, yeah. We got agreement. So, <laughs> is there still a community that, that is like super opposed to the pose mu- running method and you, you get hate mail from them all the time saying you're fucking <laughs> totally full of shit? Does <laughs> <laughs> that happen? <laughs> no, it was uh, at the beginning. He doesn't have an email. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Is that um, why you got rid of your phone? Look, I told you I'm old school Russian. No communication. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, there's got to um, be people that are stuck in their old ways that don't want to yes, accept and, any uh, new ways of doing things, right? Oh, oh, of course, it's happening. Some people even deliberately w- would come to my clinics to oppose and dispute mm. what I'm saying, you know. Obviously How dare they, they oppose pose? Uh, obviously they <laughs> failed because there is no really uh, any kind of scientific evidence they could bring up, you know. I studied this field thoroughly <laughs> so many years, you know, mm-hmm. and what people are bringing uh, own disappointments, you know that uh, <laughs> this is. It's got one T-shirt. <laughs> what you're bringing is only disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Step away from the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I really never met any serious um, uh, uh, contra arguments, you know, mm-hmm. and th- th- I met um, deliberately some people, very highly educated people, like uh, uh, astrophysics uh, guys, you know, from Netherlands. I made a special appointment with this guy in in um, Ashen. Uh, um, in um, those bones are in again. <laughs> <laughs> throw that thing uh, out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy. Th- incredible mathematician you know I came to him and I, I would like to test uh, my idea and my concept about running he told speak up <laughs> I told uh, let me show you like uh, like some graph he told don't worry about this I do understand this it's just say me the concept and I'm telling it's very simple you know it comes from uh, things like uh, Galileo Galilei things and I consider that we are moving forward by gravitational force which uh, translated through rotational torque and body weight moment you know and he told and what's the problem here I told not uh, just I <laughs> think this is what how we're moving in running and uh, at all in any movement he told 
I do not see any problem. He's uh, like, and what's and the actual y- question? Yes, and next <laughs> thing uh, he told, it's fine. And uh, I have two questions. I told, please do. <laughs> He's asking me, did anyone uh, came with this concept before you? I told, not really. He told, well, good. Next, my question is, uh, did you publish in Scientific American or Nature? I, I told, not. He told, I advise you. <laughs> 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 so this is what story. You see, this guy, nothing to do with running. You know, mm-hmm. he, he doesn't care about uh, his ego not hurting because <laughs> of my concept. You know, right. So he's free, and I mm-hmm. met uh, people of that level, several. You know, mm-hmm. and none of them was <laughs> against this. They so people who are going to resist might have a bias towards protecting the way they do things. It's or correct. They just don't want. They don't, they're not not open to saying maybe they were wrong and maybe they could learn yes, change. That's a fundamental issue. It's not the not that science. It's not no, the no, idea. no. The real scientists are absolutely quiet about these things, you know, and they understand behind this logic, you know, and not just a pulled out of ceiling, you know, or sucked from the <laughs> <laughs> finger. <laughs> it was coming from a long story of human beings, you know. Right. It, remi- it reminds me of when you hear arguments of people will say quite passionately, well, certain other ideas in science are bullshit too, like, uh, for instance, species don't descend through certain mechanisms and adapt to an environment to which there's there's no limit to the evidence to the contrary. No one's going to argue certain things in, in, in nature because we have just loads of evidence, and in this case, a lot of mathematics that can't really be fudged. Yeah, so this, this is I the ha- language. I have already a set of equations explaining how it's happening, you know, how a rotational movement is converting into a linear movement. Yeah. We have mm. already these things, yeah. and we invited real mathematicians who, who developed these equations for us, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, right, so you have a book, com- we're going to have to wrap this up here in uh, a second. <laughs> you have a book coming out? When, yes. When's uh, it coming out? What's it called? Where do we get it? Uh, it's a book uh, called Running Revolution. Uh, it's coming uh, September 30th. It's a uh, publishing right, so house. Uh, yes, it's... Running uh, Revolution, September 30th. Penguin House. It's uh, in Amazon. All the pre-sale is going on. Uh, yeah, we'll know. make sure... Do we, you guys have any printed copies already? Yes, it's, it's right there. Man, go, grab oh. one. go grab one and pull it out. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, let's show it on the camera. Uh, it's a uh, p- publishing house. Send us uh, some um, uh, uh, author's copy, you know. Uh is there, uh, do you guys uh, run a website or anything yes, like that where we people do, should visit? Yes, we uh, do. Yes, Post Method. Uh, oh, Post Tech. Uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I will, I'll link to all this stuff it's in the notes too. Post Method.com. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's also the name of your other book? Uh, yes, it's correct. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. If you guys enjoyed those videos, those are yeah. online. Learn how to run on YouTube. Mm-hmm. YouTube.com slash learn how to run. Mm-hmm. And we're going to put the links in the show. Make sure to go to barbellshrug.com. Uh, click on, you can go to like wherever we're posting this, which will be on the blog, the podcast link, and you'll be able to get all the show notes and all that kind of stuff. We do that now. So there, there's value to going to the website. <laughs> uh, you should also go sign up for the newsletter so you can find out when we do things like come to Princeton and uh, kidnap Dr. Rock. Well, <laughs> so. Maybe you won't miss out <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming I, I, on the show, guys. Oh, my pleasure. pleasure. Uh, we'll have to do I a part would, uh, two. We're only scratching at the issues. Here, <laughs> yes, <know>. it's <laughs> correct. Uh, I would say I would miss this communication between you and me. It's l- very lovely and very friendly. And well, thank uh, you very much. Inspiring communication. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Oh, well, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you would like to move into other fields uh, related with movement, I would be yours. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> You flatter you. <laughs> You're oh, making us feel good. Definitely going to have you back. <laughs> Thank you. Right, thanks Thank again. You. Cheers. To learn more about how you can support the show, go to barbellshrug.com and sign up for the newsletter.